What the tech? Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the brand new Storm Ingrip Regulator from Wolverine Airsoft and we're going to go over uh, how to do the installation, uh, how to adjust it, and uh, the airline you need to use with the Storm Ingrip. So before you get started, there's a couple tools you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a razor blade of some sort, a good sharp razor blade. Never use a dull razor blade. A 2.5 millimeter Allen key preferably a longer one like this. Uh, this is the adjustment key that's included with your storm, and then you're gonna need a 5 16 wrench. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how we do the installation. First step is going to be to remove the stock airline from the Inferno or SMP. Use the 5 16 inch wrench, and just set that entire airline aside. Included with your in-grip is another airline. You'll notice this one is a nylon macro line. It's much stiffer and more uh, rigid than the stock line. And we're gonna replace the line with that. So we're just gonna thread it in, kind of snug it down. No need to over tighten it, just snug is good. So your airline is replaced now. At this point, we're gonna cut and we are going to go ahead and put the Inferno back in the gearbox uh, the way it was. You can look at our other videos if you need help on, on the installation process, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and install it and come back once it's in the gearbox. And we're back now. Um, you can see we got the Inferno installed back in the gun. Uh, you can see our airline is uh, not real long, but sticking a good ways out of the bottom. Uh, the next step is we're going to trim the airline to the length we need. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove, that's the spanner wrench that comes uh, with the ingrip regulator. You can set that aside for the moment. We're going to remove the regulator from the, the ingrip base. Uh, this piece here is what we call the ingrip base. Uh, it stays up, mounts inside the grip, and everything attaches to it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide it right over the airline. We're just gonna slide it up there. Now we're gonna take our uh, sharp razor blade and we're gonna trim the airline just a little bit below at the end of the, the ingrip base there. And I aim for about an eighth of an inch, right like that. Now we can pop that off. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to install the gearbox back into the lower uh, and then we'll come back and look at how to put the reg actually onto the gun itself. All right, before we go any further, I want to take a look at this, make one quick comment on that, and then we'll, then we'll proceed with the rest of the installation. Uh, this is your in-grip base. We have found that on some brands of grips, uh, for instance, this Lonex grip here, the upper portion inside the uh, grip is tapered a bit, and this doesn't want to sit all the way up inside. Uh, a lot of brands, uh, that's not the case. Uh, for instance, the PTS uh, Magpul style grip, that one works great. Uh, we've tried them on Amoeba and a, a bunch of others and they work uh, with no problem. But uh, if, if you find that it doesn't want to sit all the way up inside, uh, you may want to try a different grip or uh, if you want to get a little creative, you can take a Dremel and or a mill if you have access to one and you can just put a flat on the side right there just trim that back and do the same on the opposite side right across there is that section that's the section that's causing trouble we're gonna make a design change to integrate that um, moving forward but if you find that's an issue with the particular grip you're using that's how you would go about fixing it so let's go ahead and take a look at how to get uh, this installed uh, inside the grip of the gun. The, the system includes four screws. If you have four screw holes on the bottom of your grip, I highly recommend using all four. However, in this case, we only have two, so we're just going to put two of them in, and then we're going to thread the regulator back onto the base. 
And this is a little trick that makes it much easier to install. We are going to uh, use this to get the screws lined up with the holes in the grip, so right like that. Okay, so we got the regular regulator inside the grip. The screws are poking through there, you can see. Now what we're gonna have to do is get this installed onto the uh, lower. You need to line up the airline with the fitting. Uh, can take a little bit of finagling with it to get everything lined up properly. There we go. All right, now we need to tighten down those screws that hold the grip and the regulator base on. So we're gonna remove the regulator from the base. We're gonna go ahead and tighten those screws down. So I just get them good and snug down. And at this point, your installation is really uh, basically complete. At this point, you can do an initial setting on the regulator if you want to uh, take a guess at the pressure you need uh, to, for the velocity you want. But basically the regulator just screws right into the grip like that and then screws back out. Okay, so now let's take a uh, step back and let's talk about how to adjust the pressure on this. To adjust the pressure you're going to have the regulator out of the gun. Okay. Just like the standard regulator, you use this small uh, Allen key on the side to adjust it. There's a wrench included, it's a 3 seconds wrench included uh, with the kit that you can use to adjust it. Now, there is no gauge on the in-grip regulator. Pretty obvious, right, because it's all inside the grip, nowhere for a regulator, or for a, a gauge. We know that uh, tightened all the way down is the lowest pressure as when you loosen the screw that makes the pressure go up so adjusted all the way down the pressure is going to be at 40 psi uh, when you completely unscrew the the set screw it's going to be at 140 that's a total range so you can't overpressurize the system you know the regulator is limited to the range that you need to opt we do also know though that turning the screw changes the pressure approximately 15 psi per turn. If I want to uh, set my pressure to, let's say, 80 psi, I know it's all the way tightened down. Three turns would give me 45 psi plus the 40 it starts at. That's going to give me 85 psi. So I'll just I'll do about three turns. So there's one. There's two. Let's go a little under. There's three. And that'll be at about 80 psi. Okay. And then we can install it, and then we can go to chronograph and test it. And make sure our velocity is where we want. So that's uh, that's the installation. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, it takes a a little bit of uh, a little bit of work at, at points, but nothing terribly complicated. Now I want to talk a little bit about the tournament locking and the airline that you're going to use with the in-grip regulator. Okay, so first of all, tournament locking. Question we're getting uh, sometimes is, how do you tournament lock this, right? It's inside the grip. You can't put a tournament lock on it. Well, uh, basically your grip is your tournament lock. Um, once this is installed and set up, you're going to have a fitting on the bottom, screws into the base of the regulator, and then you have the grip around the regulator. In order for you to adjust the pressure, you have to remove this fitting, which takes, as you can see, a little bit of work. And then you have to have this special tool to unthread the regulator from the base. Take it out and adjust your pressure. So in effect, the system is tournament locked. You, you can't quickly change the pressure back and forth. Um, if fields want to, they can ban people from having the adjustment tool. So our regulator is installed and our uh, ASA to remote line adapter is in place. And all we're going to do is take our remote line, plug it in. So you can see everything works. Pop it off. We're set to go. So 
that is the installation and adjustment. Uh, last thing I, I want to talk about real briefly is the use of CO2. You are able to use uh, CO2 with the in-grip uh, regulator, the storm in-grip. We do not want you using CO2 with the on-tank version of storm. Okay? It's a bad plan. Don't do it. It will void your warranty both on the regulator and the engine that you are running it with. So I want to talk about a couple things about how to use CO2 effectively. All right, so CO2 versus HPA. What's the difference? CO2 is a what we call a liquid gas, or some people call it a cold gas. It means that inside your bottle there is liquid down at the bottom, and then there's gas. That's a terrible gas drawing. Oh. But there's gas up at the top. HPA is always gas. There is no liquid. Okay, it's always gas all the way throughout. Okay, so that means that uh, one, HPA is uh, going to be a little bit more stable. The, it doesn't have to change from a liquid into a gas in order to be used. CO2 uh, will cool more than HPA. Both will cool as you use them, but CO2 will cool more than HPA. So if you're, you, you know, you're doing a lot of really uh, high rate of fire, full auto play, uh, being really heavy on the trigger, you will see the bottle cool down. Especially if it's cold outside, you're gonna you know, you're gonna see it get cool down. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. However, the big thing with CO2 is remember there's liquid at the bottom. That means that if I take the tank, flip it upside down, there's still going to be liquid at the bottom. But the bottom is now where my airline is going to. So that means that it's going to suck liquid rather than sucking gas off the top. This is not good. So whenever you're running CO2, you need to have the tank mounted vertically on your body. The little stick figure guy here, he's got CO2 on his back, needs to be mounted vertically. Do not flip it upside down. Bad plan. All right. Um, the system is very, our system is very robust, as is the regulator. If you momentarily get it upside down, it's not going to hurt anything, but it's going to cause the system not to run well, and if you do it consistently, you can end up damaging something in the system, primarily your seals. So always run CO2 vertically on your body. We, uh, we highly recommend running it uh, on your back, uh, mounted high up, with that all said, I've said lots of bad stuff about CO2. Why do we use CO2? Why do we like CO2? You get roughly three times the shots. It's also very easy to find fills for and relatively inexpensive to set up your own fill station if you have a team and want to set up your own CO2 fill station. We, we like CO2 for those reasons. Uh, a lot of us at Wolverine Airsoft use it. It performs very well as long as you use it properly. The cool down effects are mitigated by, by the fact that with Airsoft you just don't use that much air, uh, especially when you're running a Wolverine Airsoft system that's extremely efficient. You're just not using that much air, so it mitigates a lot of the cool down effects. Uh, so that's why we, uh, when we talk about CO2 versus HPA, uh, that's kind of what we're talking about. We, we use a lot of CO2, we, we do run HPA on, on some things. For a lot of just uh, quick games and, and stuff you want to be quick and easy, uh, CO2 works out really well. There you have it, that is the Storm in Grip installation and setup video. I uh, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Have a great day guys and we'll see you out on the field. What the tech?